trying fixing something and instead of GPT-4 we'll be using Gemini to fix this code. Yeah, it seemed to know a lot about uh, developing uh, Flask uh, applications and stuff so uh, let's get to it. Just open another another chat. Okay, so we have, uh, what do we have? So it's a flat application, obviously. So we have a uh, fast code. We have the index uh, HTML that we need to fix. And now importantly, uh, this CSS is for the entire project and not can okay, just leave that yeah we'll add that css in a bit as well because it's very important Let's see what the javascript files we're calling for we're calling for script the main js or script js okay again the script js is for the whole project as well it's the menus on the website and we have the main js I'm calling a bunch of uh, of uh, javascripts but let's start from here yeah we need to fix the styling on the website pretty much and yes we're using copilot as well yeah we do real time parameter adjustment that's fine split mode yeah that split mode view is uh, problematic yeah whatever refractoring the code don't think we need to do that one yet okay we don't need to refract uh, the javascript code yet but uh, below is the css file for the whole project uh, we need to sort out the styling something is currently wrong oh come on why is it deleting when you hit the microphone button it uh, gets deleted okay i have to do it manually let's pull out uh, a style file for the whole project oh this button is so annoying <laughs> i just got used to the <laughs> open ai's one but uh Ah, that was some sort of add-on. It wasn't OpenAI, it was an uh, add-on in Chrome for a uh, OpenAI website. Oh, annoying. Get the CSS below uh, and the current HTML that I just shared. Are there any issues uh, with any IDs uh, not um, included or not uh, interacting correctly? Yeah, I suspect uh, there's something happening between the two files. A uh, header navigation. Yeah, that's fine. Responsive images that seem to use it. No, the responsive images is not that. Additional style considering uh, object feed response. No, new styles. Image style max. Text section. Blah, blah, blah. Minor issues. Image grid. Uh -huh. Um no no it's not getting the whole context um, so as i mentioned already the this css file is for the entire project and um, i want to keep just one css file for the whole project to know how to add the more the microphone doesn't work if you hit the microphone again it just deletes the whole message performance yeah it do adjust those parameters for it to work better no it doesn't work better does it yeah it's playing up should be some sort of procedure is to up to it's not quite finding maybe this is better yeah there will be some sort of a better value considering the light conditions in the room and things like that blah 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 yeah, that's not what i was asking for okay can we go back to the original html and the main javascript file 
Uh, we would like to fix the styling from within HTML or JavaScript if uh, necessary. We might consider removing the split uh, view for now as well. The canvas is currently overlaid over the text. We need to fix the canvas, uh, both the video and the eye tracking canvas to work better. Let's just manually, yeah, how do we check for IDs? There's some, some uh, command, uh, terminal command that could find the uh, old IDs in HTML, but I forgot what it was. Now we're getting somewhere. Remove the split view. Yeah, might get rid of it. It's the one that does that, but I suspect it's just causing, don't really need it, makes uh, things uh, complicated. Just potentially it's causing uh, issues as well. A checkbox split view and it's IDs split view toggle. Search for it. Flex, flex, flex. Yeah, this because this is messing up potentially uh, messing up a uh, uh, styling for the page. Okay, now it's not uh, working. Why? Okay, now it's working when I click on it. Yeah, the two pages meant to be overlaid. Yeah, we have the video canvas. They are the same size and um, video container. Okay, so I commented out the code for split view toggle, but a couple of things. We need to make sure that the canvas and the video are overlaid on top of one another at all times. Okay, let's edit that. So there is no a CSS file. I probably shouldn't have shared the, um, that file. I forget the CSS file. All styling show of a for tracking canvas and the video should um, be controlled in HTML and JavaScript make sure canvas is overlaid on top of the video all the time and let's do JavaScript and the HTML with that prompt while it's uh, generating, go check out bionicchaos.com. Okay, <laughs> there's nothing <laughs> is not quite right, is it? Looks like one of those um, filters in whatever Instagram or TikTok. <laughs> Delete any styles you added previously to hashtag video container, hashtag video, and hashtag tracking canvas. We're now handling these styles inline in the HTML. Um, okay. It's would be better however yeah we need to delete stuff from well, yeah all those ids okay the video container did remove that from javascript a video element id simplify styling no more separate css for video canvas positioning it's all in the html guaranteed overlay the canvas is always positioned on top of the video due to the z index values Responsiveness, optional. You can easily add JavaScript to make the elements resize dynamically with the window. And something is up. Can't even use the controls or anything. Something. Is something seems to be interfering with the overlay. Uh, they're not the same, um, it's called aspect ratio. There's something wrong with the aspect ratio uh, between the video and the uh, eye tracking canvas and here is an image 
upload it. The HTML um, make sure a a tracking canvas in the video have the same the original um, aspect ratio. I think that's what it's called. So we're adding this to the prompt, including an image. We always did the canvas. The eye tracking canvas is being stretched while it's generating. Go check out the bodykills.com. Will be lots of interesting tools. You're absolutely right. The aspect ratio of the video and canvas is indeed often a provided image. The issue arises because you're setting fixed width and height attributes on both the less than video greater than and less than canvas greater than elements in your HTML. This forces the elements to be 640 by 480 pixels, regardless of the video's actual length. Yeah, we need to maintain the, the original uh, aspect ratio. You're absolutely right. The previous code had a small bug. Like it. The previous code had a small bug. The video content wasn't selected before attempting to append video element in canvas. Let's fix it. So, so the element that I added from within JavaScript, are they? I'm pretty sure I don't need that, but I'm still not sure about this one. Uh, line 64. Sure, so we're not loading it into HTML first. This tag error cannot set properties of null. Setting SRC object error means that the start video stream function in your video stream. JS file is attempting to set the SRC object property of an element that hasn't been found in the HTML. Well, yeah, because it told me to remove it. Okay, they're not overlaid. Well, it's generating. Go check out mindkills.com. There's some interesting blocks that you might like to let me know what you think. seem complete. Yeah, we still needed the CTX there. Maybe not. Can get rid of those. Now detect and draw a request animation frame. Catch error. Video elements not defined. Have video element ID. Should we give it to a GitHub copilot? And yeah, the video element ID. Should I just take it there outside? Just take it out here. A CTX. Yeah, this meant to be outside the function. Probably. Okay, we have the video. Yeah, we have the canvas. It's uh, not overlaid. And video are not overlaid. Any styling? It's okay. You're absolutely right. Here's the correct domain. JS along with adjustments to the HTML to resolve the overlay issue. Do we trust it? Or not. It keeps bringing the canvas and CTX into the main function in HTML. Okay, I think we're missing something. Okay, we're going in circles now. Uh, that's not fun anymore. That's not fun. Okay, they're now overlaid, but the canvas is not updating. A canvas is not updating. Uh, make sure tracking canvas and video are overlaid. Uh, make sure a tracking canvas is transparent. Well, it is transparent. That's good to have. Make sure the tracking canvas is always on top of the video. That's good to have. Make sure tracking and video have the same aspect ratio. I think we. Tracking canvas is updating live with the video. Let's able to solve some some problems so far. Let's check HTML first. A autoplay muted. Okay. Uh, those are some good prompts, aren't they? Video element, yes. Should not be constant, is it? Yeah, because a canvas ID, uh, whether we have a, the video container style relative, 
position absolute, canvas style absolute. Show the canvases on top. Don't really need the canvas uh, click through, whatever. We're not clicking on it really. A video and play, detect and draw. Where's the updating live bit? Continuous update. The request animation frame loop in detect and draw ensures that the canvas is continuously updated with the latest eye tracking results in sync with the video frames. Yeah, this is one funny thing about the uh, um, Gemini. Seem to not uh, generate everything. Kind of kidding. Maybe it's just because I got uh, used to a uh, copilot so much. Best animation frame. Ten years. And they are not related, are they? I only have the one frame. Only one frame. Why? Isn't it some sort of circular uh, circular thing over there? Okay, let's do oh, HTML first. And then JavaScript. Change the order. Change the order. While it's generating, go check out biochaos.com. There are a lot of interesting tools and blogs that you might find interesting or not. But do let me know what you think. Pop up editing. It's like a browser thing. Uh, it's not clearing. The code inside detect and draw processes the predictions from the blaze face model. It then uses the draw bounding box, draw landmarks, draw eye, and draw pupil functions to redraw the relevant elements based on the current video frame and the detected facial landmarks. Additional considerations. Performance. If you find that the tracking is not smooth enough, you can potentially optimize the detect pupil function further, as it's doing pixel level calculation. You can also experiment with different frame rates or resolutions for the video. Accuracy. The accuracy of the eye tracking can be influenced by several factors, including lighting conditions, camera quality, and individual differences in eye features. You might need to fine-tune the parameters in the detect pupil function, e.g., darkness underscore threshold, to get the best results for your specific use case. Frame canvas is not updating. Help, help. I'm unable to process images that contain people. However, I can extract the text from the image and identify some of the objects and read them in the image. The text in the image discusses a webcam eye tracking system that utilizes TensorFlow, JS, and Blaze Face for landmark detection. It mentions key features such as dynamic adjustment of parameters and the system's ability to detect eye movements. Uh, come on. Additionally, it seems there's an issue mentioned where the tracking canvas is not updating. Pen underscore spark. Get rid of the image. No. Po -po -po. I forget about the image. <laughs> should should uh, ignore. Ah, uh, uh, no. Ignore the image. I can't delete it. A city interface. What? What are you generating? We have life going on. Simulation. A hey, go check it out. I'll be taking a break. I'll see you in a bit.